Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this uh, meetup. Uh, today we have Martin Winter with us. He is an experienced agile coach, and he has a nice story to tell. So I will just hand over to you, Martin. Thank you. I just needed to unmute. So uh, thank you for having me here uh, this morning. Uh, so yeah, we, we had a talk about uh, which kind of topic could be relevant here, uh, and I suggested uh, sharing a, a little bit of uh, experience from uh, from transformations uh, coaching activities i've had in doing with different uh, kind of uh, customers uh, and it seems like uh, there's some uh, some common patterns in in what's uh, happening and what uh, you would say activities that we need to put in place and also what kind of uh, of um, uh, you could say problems uh, and um, and blockers that we find along the way, and maybe some uh, some tricks to to work with that. Uh, the um, the short presentation of uh, of me, uh, 45 years old. Uh, I live in Denmark. Uh, I'm working, uh, and I've been doing that for for quite a long time uh, as an agile professional, uh, and also in the flavor of new ways of working. So it's not only within the agile umbrella, uh, but also new uh, ways of working, but maybe more or less born out of the same mindset. Uh, I've been co-founding uh, a few companies, all with uh, within the, the area of, of agile consulting. Uh, my main focus has been uh, on transformations uh, as a transformation coach, uh, manager, organizational design uh, and teaching. I've done a lot of teaching uh, and also uh, coaching. Uh, before I started on the, these uh, more uh, coaching and consultant activities, uh, I actually also had uh, quite a long time as, uh, as um, a person within uh, teams and within uh, the production uh, of, uh, of new products working agile. So I've tried uh, both uh, and had uh, both uh, and have both uh, good and bad experiences, I, I guess. Uh, topics that uh, we will go through uh, this morning. So uh, I say the usual path uh, for an organization uh, going uh, uh, more agile. Uh, I say usual path because it seems like uh, no matter who I talk to and also all of my uh, own experiences, it seems like uh, we have more or less the same pattern in, in, in what is going on. Uh, I will try to, uh, to share with you uh, what I see uh, is, uh, is, is a natural way. Uh, and also uh, you could say, uh, no, I have, uh, of course, uh, uh, I hope every time I start on on, on uh, optimal path uh, for uh, for introducing uh, and enabling uh, new capabilities within an organization. Uh, but I also learned uh, so much now that I, that it seems like uh, it, it's good to be prepared for uh, for for not everything goes uh, uh, as it, it it could be in an optimal plan. Uh, then I also talked upon uh, the future of agile, seen from where I am, uh, and you're really welcome to uh, to fill in with uh, with your own uh, inputs here, uh, and of course questions uh, both in the end and also uh, during the the presentation. It will be here uh, in yeah, you can say we have like fifty minutes more here, uh, and I'll try to uh, to make sure that we cover uh, all three topics. So uh, the, the normal beginning of uh, an agile journey where, where I'm uh, involved uh, would be that uh, an organization uh, has already a, a few uh, teams playing around with Scrum, Kanban, et cetera. Uh, maybe it's several teams, uh, but it's, it's, it's like uh, from, from bottom up uh, flavor here. And you could say maybe we have department managers that have tried it before and they established their own kind of agile organization uh, within the, the, the overall organization. But we have a lot of uh, experience already and some energy within the teams, uh, mainly in development areas, but also maintenance operations and, and, and also out, outside uh, IT, for example. So it could be in, in several uh, departments. I've seen this also happening within uh, hardware uh, development, so it doesn't need to be uh, software that's, that kicks off uh, an agile journey. So a lot of teams uh, uh, playing around, uh, and uh, it seems like uh, there will be some kind of, uh, of kickstart of, uh, of a transformation. One, maybe several uh, brave persons uh, 
uh, in the management of the company. It can be a department manager, it can be a VP, it can also be from the CXO uh, layer. Uh, will share a dream of a more aligned and agile operating model. So maybe we have experience from, uh, from, uh, from a previous job, a previous organization. Maybe we have read a book. Maybe we have been on a conference. Or maybe we just have looked at all these teams playing around that, that it, it looks like the, the opportunity uh, for, uh, for, for, for getting even more out of these teams would be, uh, would be uh, uh, something that would be worth uh, chasing. So we have uh, normally it's it's one person that uh, that that are really brave uh, and and say okay now let's do this uh, and uh, and it needs to be within the company it's it's super difficult to come from outside and and kickstart this uh, this dream uh, we have tried it several times uh, but it seems like it's much more powerful when it starts within uh, the organization. Then uh, what normally happens at least when I'm involved. Uh, we, uh, we are in, involved as specialists, uh, consultants, coaches, uh, whatever. Uh, and it's normal uh, from a personal network uh, we are hired uh, in the beginning. It's, it's, it's pretty rare that it's, uh, it's a company where we don't have any relations, uh, either first-hand or second-hand in, uh, in, in this uh, specific uh, organization. So normally uh, a person will contact me or one of my colleagues uh, and say, uh, we need some help here. Could you please help us? And, uh, and a lot of things would, uh, would happen after, after this um, uh, to, to show you and also share with you what, what kind of um, activities that I uh, see is going on here. I can share with you some of the, the things that we hear when we uh, enter this uh, organization where Dream uh, has started on uh, becoming uh, more aligned in the, the ways of working uh, agile. Uh, so in the beginning, uh, we hear something in the flavor of we have must have one also. So we have seen other companies uh, establishing maybe a scaled implementation of agile. Maybe we have seen it uh, with a standard framework. Maybe they have uh, made their own. Maybe they have been inspired by Spotify, whatever. But we. We look at some uh, some other organizations, maybe a competitor, uh, something uh, that we can we can look at and say, okay, we, we need to have uh, some something uh, here also uh, that uh, that has the same flavor. Maybe not the best way to start. Uh, maybe they should realize uh, why we are doing this and, and have an overall strategy for this. But mostly, uh, it seems like uh, we are inspired from something outside and kicked off by 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 some energy that has been evolved in uh, within the organization. Then, yeah, who can help us with this? And uh, then we are contacted here. Maybe also just uh, in the beginning, uh, contacted uh, as uh, who in your network could uh, maybe help us here in, uh, in, in getting more uh, out of uh, the already started agile initiatives. And uh, often we also uh, get the feeling that, uh, and maybe also the order that uh, uh, while you're doing this uh, and, and helping us becoming more agile, maybe implementing some kind of scale structure, uh, make sure they don't make too much noise uh, in, uh, in, in, in this uh, activity. So the accept of this being uh, uh, quite a big change. Uh, most of you will, will know uh, if you have been part of this or if you are part of this or maybe have looked at a company going from a little bit of ag agility to a lot of agility uh, and also maybe uh, what you would call business activity and, uh, and uh, organizational structure based on agile principles. It, it's a huge change, uh, no matter what. We try to explain as much as possible in the beginning and, and also bring in cases and, and people that have tried this before. But it seems like still we are too busy doing all other kinds of things. So, so in the beginning, we, we don't really uh, accept that, that this is something that we need to, uh, to make sure that we have room and capacity to, uh, to do. So, uh, so we, uh, we are allowed to do stuff, uh, but not making too much noise uh, during the work. And that is also possible. We can, we can handle that within, uh, within uh, transformation. And I'll show you how we do this in, uh, in my own uh, uh, company's uh, transformation uh, model. Martin, before we continue, yeah. we have yeah. a question here. Yes, please. Uh, when you get approached, is it still focused on development or do you see an increase in organizations wanting to become agile all through? Uh, so uh, maybe uh, 
seven out of 10 is still uh, within development, born in development, some kind of production development. It doesn't need to be uh, IT. It could be uh, other kind of uh, products. Uh, I've been in hearing aids, for example, but it's usually in R&D or development uh, and, and very often, uh, of course, in, in IT, we see this, uh, this first movement and also the brave uh, guy or girl uh, in, the, in the company is often also placed uh, closely to, uh, to something that regarding development. That's normally what I see. I have also uh, been contacted by, by people in other parts of the organization. It could, could be HR, it could be legal, it could be uh, procurement, uh, but that's not that uh, often. It could also be the top uh, CXO uh, the layer that is approaching us. That is becoming more, uh, more usual, more seen, but, but I still feel that uh, most of the, the approaches is uh, coming within some kind of development area. Okay, more questions? No, also I just, uh, yeah, uh, uh, interrupt me uh, when we, uh, we have new questions. So yeah, uh, after this uh, first period uh, and, uh, and we have been uh, involved, it could be also internal uh, uh, coaching. It doesn't need to be like from external consultants, but somebody taking on uh, the role as, uh, as uh, ambassador uh, for, for this kind of transformation. And we quite soon uh, get the feeling and also the response, yeah, the initial teams uh, are super happy about uh, the, this new ways of working. It seems like uh, everybody is, is loving this way of working. Uh, and there's several reasons for that. First of all, uh, the first brave teams are, are often, uh, they're both brave and also pretty skilled already uh, when they are ready to, to take on new ways of working. And at the same time, we give them a lot of attention and uh, quite a high skill and experienced uh, coaches. So they get, uh, a lot of uh, attention and, and help in the beginning. So no wonder that it, it feels like, uh, like, uh, like a success uh, already here. But, uh, but it's something that is uh, uh, seen in the organization and something that, uh, that, uh, that people is, uh, is, is talking about. Okay, so look at those new teams. They're really uh, uh, working super well. And uh, quite soon, and often also too soon, uh, the, somebody uh, quite high in the organization gets the idea that uh, now we want to expand to the rest of the organization. Of course, this uh, signal is, uh, is really important for the rest of the journey, uh, and we need to react on that. But it's, it's, it's mainly not based on a, a, a solid understanding of what is going on more based on a, a really good response from the initial teams and often also the, the customer business side is seeing a, a total new way of, uh, of delivering uh, results and also being involved in, the, in this kind of, uh, of activities. So now we, uh, we are uh, closer to what we could call a, a real transformation. Now we have uh, gotten the attention and also shown that uh, this, uh, this could work. Not the optimal way. I will show you how how, how I believe it, it should be uh, done uh, if 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 we could uh, if we could actually uh, start uh, start uh, the right way. But uh, this is often how it's uh, it's done. Then we uh, as soon as possible when we get this reaction uh, that we see uh, 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 say a pull in the organization for a, a more uh, a solid implementation of of agile. We form this guiding coalition. It could be a transformation team. It could be different uh, kind of uh, of names for this, but uh, overall, uh, we just need to uh, to try to get uh, uh, a more uh, cross uh, organizational uh, involvement uh, and uh, ownership uh, for and commitment uh, for for these activities. Different kind of fun functions should be involved in the co coalition. Uh, usually, I I really. Uh, uh, really focused on getting people from uh, almost all uh, uh, functions in uh, in, uh, in the organization uh, participating here. HR are, are super important. Uh, top management are super important. Uh, uh, operational uh, development, uh, project management, PMO, uh, a lot of different uh, functions should be uh, and disciplines should be uh, involved in this guiding coalition. Otherwise, uh, we'll get too many uh, problems. Uh, down the path uh, because we haven't really uh, done our homework good enough. Too many things would be uh, 
based on guesses and assumptions instead of having real insights. Also afterwards, the implementation comes much easier when we have this uh, correlation. In my uh, mind, uh, this should be uh, more or less uh, internally uh, staffed and not too many uh, consultants uh, sitting in this guiding correlation. So from outside, uh, we facilitate, we bring in uh, cases, uh, expert knowledge, but, uh, but the, the ownership of the transformation should be uh, at, um, uh, inside the company. If we're really large, uh, then the CEO is also beginning to show interest in what we're doing. It's pretty rare that uh, he or she is, uh, is putting uh, himself uh, with skin in the game uh, at this point of time. It, it seems to be a little too early, uh, but it's really important that, uh, that we get uh, this position uh, involved uh, from the beginning. It's, 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 we don't have, this is the, the best thing that can happen for transformation. Uh, if I look back in, uh, in my uh, path, uh, if, uh, if we get the CEO to, uh, to love uh, this, this project, then it seems like uh, all kind of magic can happen. Without that, it's a little bit more struggling. Um, do we have uh, more questions? Yeah, we have yeah. one. I don't know, Jack, if you want to read it, say it, or should I read what you read? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'd love to. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, so the question um, often what I've experienced is that, um, as, as you said in one of the early slides, that change is often kind of initiated from the senior levels who want to create a, you know, a, a more consistent operating model. Um, often that that need is driven from the need, the need to have consistent reporting across the teams. Um, and, and what, what that then means is that there's resistance from the from the developers I've, I've found, you know, from, from the people doing the work, you know, they feel like a change is being imposed on them, even though it may be beneficial to them. What, what, what's your experience there, Martin? Uh, yeah, uh, I've, I've definitely seen the, the same. Uh, so, uh, so, so if we um, have too much uh, push uh, from, uh, from a management layer on doing this without really uh, uh, embracing uh, the, the culture already and the, all the good things uh, that the, the teams or the employees uh, are, are already doing and the hard work they're doing, uh, then, uh, then I see the same that you, you can actually get some pushback uh, from the teams. It's much better if, uh, if it's a uh, uh, top-down, uh, bottom-up uh, approach at the same time. So we need to have these ambassadors uh, uh, already in place uh, in, uh, in um, in the, in the teams uh, uh, and really respect uh, the current situation. So this is why, uh, and, and normally this this happens, this reaction happens if we don't look at this as a, as a, as a real uh, change management uh, exercise, but just push them uh, on, uh, on on top of the, the teams. Uh, so I've seen the same uh, and, uh, and it's super important that we get uh, both sides uh, on the, uh, at, uh, of the story uh, involved. And this guiding collation that I uh, 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 are speaking about here uh, should definitely also involve uh, members from, uh, from from the teams. So we have the, their, uh, I would say, daily work and uh, their problems, uh, impediments uh, right at the table uh, from the beginning. Yeah. Thank you. We have a question from Emily. Yeah. Yes, please. Yes, uh, I was just thinking about how how large are the organizations organizations that you usually work with. Uh, if we talk about having the CEO involved, and uh, then I didn't know exactly how to phrase it, but can or should you uh, do an agile transformation in all types of organizations? Uh, definitely not uh, should, uh, because it, it, I'll get back to that. So, so, uh, so I'm pretty sure that uh, that a lot of good things happens uh, when you do an agile transformation. Uh, that's at least my experience. But uh, should you do it already? Uh, always? No, I'm I'm not sure about that. You really think you really need to think about uh, the the overall purpose and also the impact on the organization and the ecosystem that you're part of uh, before you do this. Uh, playing around with agile uh, implementations uh, within teams, projects, uh, departments, uh, that is all good. Uh, as soon as we talk about a transformation, it's uh, transforming of the overall uh, company and it's definitely not uh, something that I would recommend to do every time because it's, it's a really big effort. You need to be prepared and you also need to understand uh, why we're doing this. Or the, 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 the worst thing that I've seen happening is that we do this 
and the, 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 the top the management or the board of directors doesn't really understand this. And uh, maybe uh, a couple of years down the, the, the road, they maybe start to pull backwards because they get a little bit nervous about letting all of this control, uh, 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 you would say, drill down in the system. And they pull backwards. And what will happen is that uh, your employees and your, your managers that are, uh, are starting to feel the power of working uh, in an agile structure, they will actually be pretty disappointed and find another place to, to work in. I've seen this uh, a couple of times. So. Uh, companies should be pretty careful before they, 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 they embark on this journey as an overall transformation. They nearly, really need to understand what it is and believe that this is the right way to go. Because the employees, as you probably already have, have experienced, or most of you, they really like this. And also managers uh, that, uh, that understand this uh, ways of working uh, uh, now see a lot of benefits uh, and a much, much better uh, uh, balance and sustainability in the, in, in the way that we work. Uh, regarding the size of the organizations that I've been working with, uh, they have come in in many sizes, from 50 people to uh, 3,000, 5,000 uh, people. Uh, the big organizations, of course, it's a, it's a total, uh, it's another story. Uh, I have, uh, when I uh, come to my transformation model, also a, a concept for that, but it's just super difficult. Yeah. The best, fastest, most reliable, uh, most uh, you could say smooth transformations me and my colleagues have been doing has been in companies in the size of you could say 100 to 500 people uh, and the the, the 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 lower the number the better uh, and that's for a reason of course and that's nothing to do with uh, with uh, with agile uh, you could say capabilities and and, and how we work uh, agile and organize it's it's more about change management if we are in an organization where we can actually oversee everything, we can we can we, we can do something and we can see the reaction at the same time. Uh, then uh, then we are in a, a much better uh, situation. As soon as we get in the larger uh, corporations, where where the um, the overview uh, of what is actually going on is is a little bit more blurred of too many layers, it's 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 another uh, case. But if you get the CEO uh, in place, uh, I've tried that in a company with, uh, uh, it was a couple of years ago, with thousand people, uh, uh, part of the company. As soon as the CEO bought this idea, uh, everything uh, it just uh, wrote much quicker and, uh, and it worked uh, super well. Um, more questions or should we continue? Yeah, yeah we have one from Yes, yeah. yeah, please. Yes, hi again. Um, it's a little bit aligned with what Emily asked for uh, or asked about. Um, and I'm wondering when when you get approached, what are the most common arguments or reasons why the organization wants to transform transform to agile? And is it realistic? And do you have to like kind of explain to them what agile really is? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, definitely, uh, and it seems like uh, it's a it's a, it's a never-ending uh, task <laughs> to explain what it is uh, about. Mm. Uh, it, it seems like uh, it's a good thing because I actually earn money doing that. But uh, but 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 uh, the, it for us, most of us being here, it's it's pretty obvious uh, what it is about, and we can feel uh, what's agile, what's not agile, uh, and also lift the, the the mindset and the values. Uh, for an organization with a lot of um, history and uh, and uh, and and uh, legacy, uh, it, it seems like uh, we need we need to uh, remind uh, the, about what it is and also the overall purpose. About the purpose, uh, it seems like, and also how we are approached, it seems like a different kind of um, uh, you could say. Uh, Kickstarters uh, for, for this has uh, has been seen. One of them are what I mentioned. We want something uh, uh, similar to what our neighbors are doing. So we have seen another company do this, uh, maybe uh, in, in real life, or maybe we've just heard about it. And it seems like they're making good results. So that, that is one uh, really common uh, uh, approach which is of course not uh, super smart because uh, they don't know why uh, it works uh, and, and 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 if it would work in their own organization but they just feel like this is something they want and that's common for a lot of trends and agile is still a trend and, and definitely also scaled agile is, is a trend so so we want to be part of that trend 
Another thing is that we have uh, managers that have tried it before in another company. That is also quite common. So they have done it before and they want to, to do the same thing in this company. It could be on a VP, uh, vice president uh, uh, level, a senior vice president level, also CXO. Often it's it's a little bit below uh, that we get this. Uh, and also it, it could be that the really brave uh, team members are, uh, are approaching us and say, you should talk to my manager. We need to do something more than uh, what we're doing right now. And then we get the chance. Um, so, so that's how 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 it could be. It's uh, but 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 the reason is often not uh, based on uh, on a clear idea of uh, how this fits to the to the company's strategy and overall vision. Maybe we have a feeling it will help us, but but really, uh, when you ask the question, uh, so what would be the single most important uh, success criteria for this transformation? Uh, they will give you. Uh, several uh, different answers like, depending on who you are asking and that's maybe not the best idea to uh, to start like this so we have a lot of work doing in uh, in aligning the expectations and also uh, uh, what the purpose could uh, could be Thank okay you. yes let's try to continue a little bit and then we can take some uh, some more uh, more questions um so uh, when we have started now and uh, and it seems like uh, we want to scale it a little bit i'm not talking about scale agile necessarily it can be different uh, flavors of that uh, normally it is uh, different frameworks but scaling mean that we both do it uh, on uh, on uh, on on a level with more teams uh, but also uh, in a uh, more vertical in the organizations we start to get more layers how we do pro projects programs uh, pod portfolio management and so on, we, be, be, we begin to see that uh, that uh, that we need to do more than just uh, having really uh, strong teams uh, with a good framework. So uh, then we uh, we talk about fixed teams. Everybody would like to have fixed teams. Uh, it seems like uh, the, the best results, the best reactions we get from teams in, in the early stages are from the teams uh, that, that now feel they belong to a team. They are uh, fully allocated into to, uh, to, to a team with a specific purpose and they have only one backlog to work uh, with. And, and, and normally that would not be the case. They have maybe been used to working in, in several projects at the same time. This is a really, of course, if we understand a little bit about Lean, uh, this is of course a, a, a major uh, improvement from uh, what we have done before. But when we try to scale this, we, we soon uh, run out of uh, competences because we, we, we cannot uh, just uh, uh, copy paste our employees uh, so so we are lacking some of the specialist uh, areas and we start to to wonder how should we do this as fixed teams and it is it flexible enough so so we need to challenge that a little bit and 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 and, and make workarounds for that that could be shared services uh, components it could be different ways of doing this uh, and maybe also allow a little bit in in having people moving from uh, from one team to another team more fluent in in how we do it but we need to be careful here uh, otherwise it's they're, they're definitely not in a maturity stage where we can have more fluent teams so so we need to have something fixed here but usually we manage to do it uh, not for everybody but but a lot of uh, teams starting to getting a, a more fixed structure and here it's important to remind uh, the organization that uh, this will probably change uh, within uh, a year or so because we have probably uh, cut uh, the organization uh, uh, a little bit um, uh, uh, you could say away from the op optimal uh, uh, organization structure we don't know that yet but we will learn during the, the next phases uh, then we are we are hearing this uh, because we see that some of our senior managers they're starting to be become a little bit nervous about uh, their uh, future role uh, teams are apparently uh, working uh, pretty well without uh, uh, supervision all the time. So what would be the future role? And of course, there's a lot of roles and uh, and and a lot of need for these kind of uh, of, of really uh, skilled uh, people. We just need to be aware of that in the beginning. I I, I try to build this in uh, to the to the to the transformation in the beginning to make sure we have answers for all of these questions. Uh, but not everybody uh, will be uh, a manager like they were before. Uh, that's definitely something that will change. Uh, they will have different uh, kind of uh, of management positions. And also, we feel that uh, that uh, they, they are a little bit nervous about uh, silos in the in the organization. Uh, be careful not to break the current silos because these are the you could say the kings and queens within the organization. They have built a really powerful. Uh, 
business unit or whatever. So, uh, so we start to get a little bit of resistance here. And as you can imagine, if we have the CXO, uh, CEO involved here, it's much easier to break down those silos. Uh, if we don't have, uh, then it's it's pretty difficult. But we don't need to do that in the beginning because we need to get some learning into the organization and just look at them uh, getting some knowledge here. We will see that uh, even though we have a lot of dependencies across silos, uh, it seems like uh, the communication, the collaboration between teams and department has just increased uh, 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 strongly. Uh, and we see also the uh, communication to the to the clients, uh, customers, business uh, people, and the rest of the organization has just increased. Uh, really uh, nice to see, and and this just support our 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 journey. Uh, so. Let's look at our project governance or whatever governance structures, policies, operating model in, 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 in total and, and see how we can do this more lean. Now we have seen uh, how this works uh, on, a, on, a, on a more scaled uh, base. We also know uh, a lot of impediments that are built into the organization and we can see that we need to, uh, to, to do things another way. It could be that some of the organization uh, governance policies has been changed already but usually it, it, it comes in a little bit late in the in the in the, in the phase for me it's okay uh, as soon as we know uh, where we have some uh, some uh, some problems we can uh, and everybody are aware of that in our guiding collation we can start uh, finding solutions for for that so uh, what do we hear when the magic is about to, uh, to happen? When I talk about magic then it, uh, it's about where we as uh, as experts can can uh, get a little bit more in the background. We see things happening uh, by themselves and it's like, it's, it's an unstoppable movement what has happened here. And this is also where we need to be careful. If we if uh, the, the, the manager's uh, CXO uh, layer is starting to, uh, to pull backwards, this is a bad timing for, for them because it's too late actually to, to change this, uh, this movement. It could be that uh, we get this feeling uh, just uh, when when we get to uh, before we get to this stage that uh, it doesn't really feel right. I will get a lot of if, if you have tried to work just with teams, you see also as soon as we implement some uh, some some structures around how we, we work together, ways of working, and some transparency and feedback loops, we see uh, maybe more problems that we saw before. It's not new problems. It's not not new impediments. It's just something that we haven't been aware of before. Uh, so now we need to uh, react on those uh, those problems. We need to be prepared for this. We need to have the support in our guiding coalition so we can actually react on those things. But it will feel uh, a little bit uh, difficult in uh, when we start the scaling part of this uh, because uh, a lot of dependencies, uh, uh, a lot of issues, uh, impediments are, are showing up uh, in uh, in uh, between the teams. And, and definitely regarding the dependencies uh, across uh, the organization. So we try to uh, to, uh, to, uh, to together with the organization uh, experiment with uh, with how to, we could how we could organize a little bit different, so we get rid of those uh, dependencies. It could be around product, so we have more product or services that we uh, are organizing around, so the teams are more uh, born into a specific. A part of uh, of our uh, service uh, uh, or products in, uh, in in the company, what we also call value streams in uh, in, in, in value stream uh, organization. This is uh, quite difficult to do. Again, here we run out of people uh, and and talent, uh, and it's also sometimes a, a bigger task than you maybe should expect to uh, to actually learn uh, about uh, what is the most important product where are we actually providing value in our uh, uh, company and where should we uh, probably uh, down prioritize our activities uh, and a lot of things would, could happen here but definitely also the portfolio management uh, and the funding structures are starting to uh, to be changed here when we don't talk about projects that much more because we have actually more funding of our values teams and our products so we have another uh, ways of, of, of funding our initiatives uh, we also quite uh, clearly uh, should uh, should start uh, uh, discussing how we could uh, could make the the funding and the and the overall portfolio management governance structures more aligned with the with the, this way of working and uh, I guess we can have some, uh, before I talk about the transformation model, uh, some questions here. It looks like there's a few. Yeah, we have one from Tommy. 
Yes, hi there. Um, uh, it might be a big topic here. Uh, <laughs> thanks for um, making us listening to your reflections. Uh, basically, often it comes almost like a wet blanket of a, for an agile transformation when management clearly states that they still need to have some kind of visualized progress measurement done. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are your reflections regarding that? I mean, it's often connected to a deadline, more or less. Yeah. So, like, so we do. So, progress is that regarding like um, results of the transformation or like product mm -hmm. project development? Exactly. Thanks for um, uh, clarifying. It's for the product. So, yeah, even okay. with or without an agile transformation, we yeah. want to know the progress of the product development. Yeah, so uh, yes, uh, it can be uh, quite a challenge. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, we're used to having all of these uh, status uh, reporting uh, in place for, for projects, uh, for example, uh, development projects in, in the organization. Uh, some of us uh, know that uh, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, more or less uh, just a uh, uh, a game we play because then the numbers and the, the progress uh, figures they see in, in these status reports are, are based on assumptions and guesses and not really based on reality. So uh, so so we try to uh, to get uh, other uh, kind of uh, of measurements in place where we measure more about the delivered value, uh, actually measure uh, working products uh, delivered increments that are potentially uh, releasable or maybe already released. Uh, my um, my approach is normally to get uh, those two measurements uh, running at the same time, just removing the old ways of, uh, of uh, you could say, measuring progress uh, and replace with something new is maybe a little bit uh, too big uh, a change because so many things are built around those, in my word, a little bit fake reporting systems. Uh, but but it's still something that uh, a lot of decisions are based on. So have those in place at the same time as you start uh, also um, uh, implementing another way of uh, of uh, actually um, uh, show uh, progress in in our development. Uh, when we get a more stable structure and we start getting actually deliverables in each uh, iteration. Uh, maybe also on, uh, on, uh, on, on a larger scale, uh, when we have scaled uh, uh, our setup, so we have multiple teams working together, we see those integrated uh, developments uh, and we have demos and reviews on those and invite the organization and the customer to show those, they will start to learn about uh, seeing progress as actually deliver, delivered value and not that much uh, progress on activities uh, within a project plan. But I do this in, in parallel, if it makes sense, and it's a little bit uh, overhead uh, of work. Uh, it's also a struggle, but just uh, removing uh, the old ways of reporting is uh, is often not a good idea. The reaction in the in the organization would be be too big. Yeah. Thanks. But it's super difficult. Uh, if if I uh, if if you do it uh, uh, in in one project, if you have a pilot project where you are allowed to do a lot of uh, experiments, you can do that uh, there. Uh, just remove the old ways of reporting. On, until something breaks, uh, then just stop the old reporting and old reporting the new way where we actually show, invite people for demos, be uh, involved in the, in the, in the prioritization of activities. We 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 have transparent um, velocity and uh, and uh, and capacity uh, figures and then and, and for, uh, forecast for our team and start to pro, uh, uh, show those in the, in the, in the organization. But we need to experiment before we uh, we change, I guess. Yep. Mm. Great, we have a lot of questions today. Uh, yes, yes. Helena or Helene. Yeah, I asked you actually to, if you could freeze it. Uh, okay. Since I'm sitting here in the middle of everywhere. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, the question is, how do you work with changing the mindset in the organization? For example, changing a culture of blaming each other or the way managers communicate to the employees that are behaving as traditional managers, pointing out what should be done rather than practicing servants' leadership. Oh, yeah, she's in a landscape and that. It's, uh, yeah, we have, we have seen those, uh, of course, uh, uh, sometimes uh, happening. Uh, 
a powerful tool here are the guiding coalition uh, that we put in place in, in the organization. So uh, we spend a lot of time in teaching uh, and educating these uh, these people to be uh, front runners in, uh, in 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 showing uh, uh, how this culture and how to behave and how to actually uh, go go around uh, and uh, and treat people uh, in the right way. So a lot of education, a lot of training in the, for managers. Um, actually, we should uh, do more uh, training for the managers in the beginning compared to what we do in the teams. The, the team implementations are, are pretty straightforward uh, uh, to do, uh, but actually train our managers is, is one way of doing that, giving them an, a language, uh, giving them a, a common set of tools in how to uh, to work in a more modern uh, way of, of management. Um, at the same time, uh, make sure that, uh, that uh, if we see uh, and I've, I'm really uh, normally I'm really close in the organization, uh, taking part of uh, a lot of uh, uh, activities and meetings, and actually are able to see those kind of uh, mis patterns, uh, anti patterns on, uh, on on how to behave uh, in the organization, and maybe by coaching uh, these people. Normally, it's because they don't understand uh, and don't have the skills to uh, to to be more, you could say, uh, human in the ways of uh, of leading. And, and, and help them in doing this. Uh, and if we have uh, a few people that are not uh, capable of changing and it's, it's too big uh, a risk uh, having them in the organization, we need to uh, make sure they find uh, another place uh, where, where this kind of management are more uh, suited. Uh, but be aware of that, uh, make sure that we teach and educate uh, people in, uh, in, the, in the behavior, give them some tools and also uh, follow up. It's not only classroom training, it's definitely a lot of mentoring and, and coaching. Yeah, so so that would be how, how to do it. And again, if we can get in uh, some inspiring people in the management layers that have done this before, show how to do it, it this would be really good. Yeah, some ambassadors in the, this way of working. And again, if the CAXO, uh, CEO understands uh, how this should be done, uh, uh, a lot of things will just be easier because then the culture will break down normally in the organization. Yeah, mm -hmm. Should, uh, I guess if we have uh, yeah, a couple of questions and then uh, I will also make sure we see the, the transformation model. So uh, yeah, we can just have a few more questions uh, and then uh, when we have 10 minutes yeah. left or so, we, we make sure we see the model also. Mm -hmm. We have a question from Dragan, but then I think we need to move on. Dragan, please. Uh, no, no, uh, Martin. Martin already covered it with the with the building of. Oh, okay, 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 so, yeah, in, in okay. Okay, let's place. let's move on a little bit, and then uh, let's mm -hmm. see if, uh, if we have more uh, more questions. No problem. So it's it's it's. I think it's 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 really good that you ask uh, these questions, uh, so I can elaborate on those instead of just talking to uh, to slides here. Uh, so, transformation in a nutshell. A few, uh, you could say. Uh, handles that can be pulled or, 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 or themes uh, to be aware of, uh, get the right motiv motivation in place, make sure that we, we have a design uh, of, uh, of, of how this could be. I, I really like uh, early in the, in, in, the, in the phase to get some kind of uh, a drawn uh, goal. Uh, how, how, could we, how could we imagine this uh, look like in the, in, in the future, two, three years from now? Let's just draw together with the, the top uh, managers and this uh, guiding coalition. How could this look like? We don't we don't use it for anything else, but just having idea of of a shared uh, vision for where to go. You could call this a blueprint. So we have an idea of how could this look like. With our best cases, a lot of are uh, based on assumptions. We know that and hypothesis, but but this is uh, this is something that is super important to get us aligned. Management alignment, make sure that we only have few success criteria, KPIs, objectives for, for this, uh, this transformation. If I can get it down to one specific objective, why we're doing this, it's absolutely the most powerful. Maximum three objectives to, uh, to, to look for. If we have too long a list, I've worked with, uh, with, uh, with colleagues that have a list of two, 300 KPIs we could measure in an agile transformation. I would not recommend that. Uh, it's, 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 it's too much uh, and it doesn't give us any focus, which is uh, a quite uh, important value in working agile. Working with pilots, uh, pilots are early uh, movers, uh, clearing the path for the rest of the organization. Do that, make sure they get the right support, but also make sure that it, it doesn't need to be successful pilots. This, it's a, a successful pilot is where we have learned a lot. 
that enables us to make better decisions uh, in the beginning. Just have a pilot where everything just works out brilliant, but we haven't really learned how to do this in a larger scale. Is not really a good uh, pilot. It can be a really good selling uh, point for for getting a, be allowed to do this in a broader uh, scale, but we haven't learned uh, that much. Scale and improve as soon as we get the idea of of how to to do this. Uh, roll out the teams, do it, make powerful, strong teams, but don't fool ourselves to believe that this will never change. Uh, I guess that uh, nine out of ten of the transformation I've done. Uh, one uh, year, uh, uh, one and a half year down the road, we, we will rearrange uh, the teams and, and uh, because we have learned about how to organize better. Adjust processes and structure, uh, the overall structure uh, uh, around how we work, uh, break down silos and so on, and build competences. The competences are really important uh, to do and, uh, and make sure we get the, the best kind of, uh, of education into, uh, into the organization as possible. This is a really uh, good investment. And make sure that also uh, the, the culture of actually take ownership of own competence are, are in place. The transformation model that I'm using, uh, and if you want to learn more about this, you can just contact me. Uh, I have uh, 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 quite uh, a lot of uh, coffee meetings just talking about how to do this. Uh, it, it doesn't need to be a, a bigger case than that, so you can just contact me if you want to. Uh, I have uh, cases and stuff that could support this. So based on, uh, on the, the, the 10 last years of the transformations me and my colleagues have been doing, we have made this transformation model that we have worked with for the last three years, I guess. So uh, we believe in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in building a transformation based on hypotheses. That is super important for, for how we work. Uh, everything is just hypotheses before we have validated our assumptions. Some of them are more supportive, but you could say experience. But this is uh, quite important. Uh, we use coaching, we use mentoring, we use training uh, a lot. And we also make sure that we have uh, a, a quite powerful approach to change management. I believe in, uh, in, in lean change management, agile change management approaches, where we use these hypotheses and validate those uh, in, in iterations. That is my uh, approach. Other kind of change management, uh, you can say, uh, formats, uh, concepts would also work. You just need to be uh, aware of the need to have uh, some, some specialists uh, in, in, in doing change management. It should be something that uh, fits the culture. We then uh, 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 look at our uh, transformation in, in four different uh, categories. So we have the management and culture. We need to be aware of that. And we need to make sure our guiding coalition have uh, people that can support that and has knowledge in that. Managers, HR, and so on. Then the organization and governance. So our operating model on how we have structured our, our, our organization how we have, uh, what kind of reporting systems we have, what kind of policies, uh, which kind of structures uh, we have here, make sure that we have a focus on changing those. Deliverables and team, delivery and teams. That's tools, that's Scrum, that's Kanban, that's uh, Scrum Masters, product owners, scaling agile structures and so on uh, would uh, be in this area. And then we need to be uh, make sure that we also have a, 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 an eye on, on how to build our architecture. So it's also support uh, an agile ways of working. Uh, so uh, opposite of a static approach to, uh, to, to, to building products, the agile uh, approach uh, actually needs a, a little bit different architecture that I support um, uh, current uh, refactoring new ways of, uh, of, of doing stuff and, and being able to test out uh, stuff. And also how are we actually uh, uh, using our, our architectures in the organization and also operations, how are we doing this? On the left-hand side, uh, before we get started with all of this, uh, I talk about this as an initial phase in the preparation phase, establish the vision and goals. Uh, this is done at the same time as, uh, as we get started in the organization get some, uh, some early uh, ideas on how to do this, establish this guiding collation, as I mentioned, schedule uh, the startup. Uh, the startup is also where we uh, uh, educate uh, top management if we allow it. But the transformation could, got, could be uh, half a year down the road uh, after we actually uh, entered the organization the first time. We need to make sure that we are ready before we do the transformation. Appoint some pilots to get some early uh, learning. In the end, 
I would say that the, our approach and our goal would be that agile and also the a learning culture is uh, is a natural part of the organization DNA, and they will just continue to do stuff. So if if an organization is not uh, in a couple of years working uh, with Scrum and Kanban and uh, uh, whatever kind of tools that we have uh, uh, teach them, but still are on a learning path. It's all good. Uh, we, the agile will never be the goal. The goal is that we get more uh, learning and more capabilities of, uh, of actually improve along the way. Super important principles for us have been really uh, important. Uh, and also to make sure that we are aligned on those principles before we can, uh, we can work with the client. Uh, so we help uh, the, the client. Uh, would challenge, uh, but the client must own and lead the change themselves. Other companies, other uh, consultants are doing it differently to take upon the full organization and the ownership of the transformation. I don't believe in that. I, 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 I'm a really strong believer in that, uh, that the organization needs to take on the ownership themselves. Sometimes uh, we need to balance on this. Sometimes uh, we need to push a little bit more than uh, and show the way uh, that, that I would dream of. But the, but the concept must be that the, the, the customer owns this transformation itself. Uh, the design is based on uh, specific needs, definitely uh, spe specific needs for, for a current situation in, the, in a company, a specific uh, company organization. We do not, without really thinking about it, just copy what other organizations are doing. You have probably seen that uh, earlier, and also uh, in, in the future, we'll see that we'll just copy what other companies have done. Super bad idea, because uh, 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 this uh, fitting and, uh, and tailoring of the processes are super important. But also, when we do this, we get some, uh, some education and some, some, some competences built up in the organization. If you just uh, fast forward uh, 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 through those kind of, of learnings, uh, a lot of mistakes will be, be made during the, the, the implementation. We believe in experimentation. We do that early. We do that with our pilots, uh, but we do that ongoing also afterwards uh, because we can actually figure out uh, what will work in it in months. Uh, we have a good idea. Uh, the customers cannot uh, foresee either what will happen. So we get this feeling of experimentation. Uh, we have a lot of good ideas, a lot of good uh, assumptions of what will work, but everything needs to be changed a little bit in my experience to make it work. So we invite. We inspire people, the organization, because we believe that no one uh, can actually uh, be forced to, to change. So some of the, one of the questions uh, early on uh, was about uh, how the organization react if we just push uh, 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 put uh, uh, an idea on top of uh, uh, a team or some, uh, some employees and say, now we do this because I believe it's a good idea. That's impossible. You cannot force anybody to change. You can make them do things differently, but their mindset will not change before they understand this. So invite them instead and have a bottom up, top uh, down approach at the same time. That would be my uh, recommendation uh, at least. So uh, a few more uh, questions maybe before we uh, run out of time. An agile uh, principle is to end on time. We're time boxing, so, so let's try that. Any questions that we, we could take? May I jump in? I have, a, I have a good question, if that's okay. Um, Martin, <clears throat> so often when organizations take on uh, take on change, there's a, there's a large cost involved, one to pay the consultant, the second, the, the actual cost to the organization yeah. uh, during the uh, period of the transformation. And the question is asked, well, so I'm putting in this much money, how much money am I kind of getting yeah. back in terms of, you know, maybe value to the customer? How do you answer that question? Uh, so uh, uh, some of my... Um... Uh, competitors are actually uh, promising uh, benefits uh, in the economics. Uh, I don't do that because you cannot uh, afterwards uh, actually prove that uh, that you are right. So many things uh, you can just look uh, the last uh, three four years uh, in the world. Nothing can be uh, foreseen, so we, we don't know what's actually working. So instead of that, uh, I, uh, I I try to make them uh, upfront think about uh, the, the opportunities that they have still in the organization. How much opportunity do you think you have left? What, how much more capacity? How much better product could you build? 
and, and measure or put a, a price tag on that. Okay, how much would that actually be value? And that's quite a lot. <laughs> uh, and then the cost of the consultants are, are nothing. And also my approach would be have a minimum set of consultants. That doesn't need to be the big uh, uh, price tag here. The price tag are actually the change. Make sure that you have room for learning. Otherwise, uh, you, uh, you, you will get a surprise uh, uh, down, the, down the road. So I try to uh, not promise uh, anything. Uh, the best thing is actually to, uh, to uh, take them in the hands and invite them uh, to, uh, to another uh, client and, uh, and see results there. And then, they, okay, it, it seems like I believe in that story. Uh, so, yeah. Unfortunately, the, the other thing would be good. Then I could uh, take much more, uh, more for, for my services if I could actually prove the, the impact. But uh, I'm afraid I haven't really found that out yet. Yeah. So we are out of time, uh, or more or less, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we have one question, uh, uh, but it takes really long time. But we have um, a comment from I, Quanlit. You made a comment here, Richard, if you would like to. Yeah, and it's it's a bit too long for uh, for yeah, the time box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, but it's okay. it's more of a reflection. So yeah, Martin, uh, I, yeah. free to take mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I, I liked it. That's why I wanted. Yeah, we can try. Okay. So, uh, let's mm -hmm. let's uh, for for those of you that are leaving now. Thank you for for listening. And I, I know that it has been recorded and the presentation. I can send it uh, out, and you can share it if you want to. I, I, I'm not sure. You can also just contact me. There's no no secrets in in, in this, so no problem. Uh, I'm I'm on LinkedIn uh, and and actually uh, react on the <laughs> on the DMs there. So we can take five more minutes and try to uh, to, to elaborate on this question. I don't know what the question is, but it uh, so could anybody involve me in that? Yeah. So the short version, I hope, is uh, is to is is on a different level. Um, in your talk about your experiences with customers. That triggered a lot of questions in the group that's here today. Um, so what does that say about the current state of Agile? What does that say about us as a group? What does that say about us and our customers? So uh, I believe that, um, uh, that we still have these uh, clashes uh, between cultures and, uh, and um, and beliefs and values. So even though we can speak the same language, because we've heard uh, Agile, Scrum have been there for, for several years, more than 20 years, Scrum 30 years. So, so we have heard about it, we, we can speak the language. And, uh, but, but how we actually interpret that, uh, or our uh, own values are probably a lot different. And we have um, still a lot of, uh, expectations in the in the organizations on on results and 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 being busy and showing results uh, uh, and that's also uh, in, in all kinds of changes uh, a big problem to actually get the, the 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 time and room to make to make the change so i think because we we, 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 we think we talk about the same but we don't we don't really dig uh, down in the in in in, in the layers and, and and figure out where we actually don't really align and build on that. So, so my approach would be this education, make sure that we really build on, 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 on building up capacity uh, or, or competence within the organization. Normally that takes more than uh, a few weeks. It can take half a year before we actually get that same language. That's also why I'm, I'm actually quite um, um, patient with the customers, instead of just uh, rushing through something uh, that I believe is the correct thing, make sure we have a little bit of pull uh, from the organization where we start to, to understand these kind of ways of working. And also sometimes you just need to realize, okay, it, it will break at some point of time. And after that break, then we can have the, the real learning, right? Uh, and be brave enough to, uh, to be part of that because uh, as soon as you implement transparency, all the problems will just uh, show up. And somebody, uh, if we don't, if we have, haven't really changed the culture of, of blaming, people will start blaming each other who are, who are to blame on these problems. And, uh, and you really need to be aware of that and make sure that, uh, that you can handle that somehow. A strong uh, consultant can, can help a lot, uh, but not solve everything. You can facilitate the, the dialogue, yeah. Uh, but also when you ask about where are uh, Agile right now, we believe we are a long way, but actually uh, I believe more that we are just, just getting started. What you will see in, uh, in the coming years, 
are a lot of new leaders uh, that have been, uh, been, been, been born in agile organization getting out there. They have been on middle management, uh, maybe department managers, but they are starting to, uh, to grow their own career. So I, I, I would expect that, uh, that, that, um, that we will in the future get better uh, conditions for actually uh, do these kind of transformations because just much more uh, many persons in the company and in the management layer I have, have actually already experienced in, in, in working like this. Yeah. yeah. And maybe the, the word agile in the future will be a little bit different. But really the, the, the foundation is the same. Yeah. So should we uh, try to, to cut the, the, yep. the presentation here? Yeah. yeah. So big thank you to you, Martin. Yeah, thank it's you for been inviting me. Great. Yeah. A lot of engagement in the audience, which really shows uh, it was a good presentation. Mm -hmm. So thank you for all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have a nice day, everybody. Mm -hmm. Good luck out there. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, thank you very Bye. much.